All right. <clears throat> this is Sirach, chapter 18, verse 25. When thou hast enough, remember the time of hunger. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. All right, Brach Thay Hawa, Brach Thay Hawa Shai. I want to give a double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. And I also want to say peace and blessings, citations to the hopefully elect. All right, it's a high spirit we in Judah. And this is a continuation of the last lesson I've did. I've done, you know, the, the traps of Esau, man. All right. When thou has enough, remember the time of hunger, man. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. Because, you know, I actually talked to a, a banker, man, you know, at the bank. And, you know, they basically kept it real with me. And it was like, you know, the so-called black man, you know, they said, you know, the black man, he has this thing where if he has only $5 left, Five dollars left, he something in him tells him to spend that five dollars, you know. But this is actually scriptural, man. You know, Jake has to change his paradigm of his or his way of thinking when it comes to money because you know Jake can also cause his own suffering, man. You know, Negroes. I, I was I grew up around Jake. I'm Jake, you know. So I can I subscribe to what that banker was saying. When that has enough, remember the time of hunger. All because you have twenty dollars left, that doesn't mean you spend twenty dollars, man. It'll behoove you to put something back after you pay your tights, after you treat yourself or whatever. I always have a structure to um, I always have a structure set up to where you treat yourself, man. I mean, to where you save money, man. Or save for a rainy day. You're not necessarily saving to get rich. You're saving for a rainy day, man. That keeps you from borrowing money. When thou has enough, remember the, remember the time of hunger. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. So what does it literally just mean to think and reflect? Or what 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 plan of action can you do along with thinking upon poverty and need, man? Putting back. Because you're not going to always be on the up and up, man. All right? But from there, I want to go get some more examples of, you know, brothers and their, their dealings with money. And how a lot of times brothers... They'll fall off of money, man. I mean, yeah, we under the curses, but sometimes you could cause your own effect, you know, while being under the curses, man. All right? Because basically we haven't been taught to be structured in this society. All right? This is uh the book of Sirach, chapter 9. Um, I'm going to show I started three. Meet not with the harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. All right? Well, I started two, Sirach, Sirach 9 and 2. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance, man. Yeah, don't g give your woman access to your bank account, man. All right? Y'all got these joint accounts, man, and you let her know about your little savings account. All right? You give her just access to everything, man. All right? You have to have something tucked away for yourself, man. What if you do live with a woman, man, and she and it's, it's her apartment, and y'all get into an argument or something, and she costs herself giving you the boot, man? Where are you going to go? All right, you got to have some money tucked away to at least uh, get get an, uh, an extended hotel, man. I'm, I'm just being honest, you know. You have to think like that as a man. I always have tuck away money, man, emergency money. All right, verse 3. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. Now, this could be used several ways because the job of a harlot is to get your money, but women themselves, their ulterior motive basically is to get your money in a lot of cases, man. All right. Even when you go to a, a strip club, man, the whole goal is to get you rock hard so you can go to the back room and get a dance, man. Or in some cases, to get sex, all right? But, you know, you have to be aware of the business and how things work so you won't be a victim of it, man. Because you got jakes that go and literally get harlots and, and go to and strip clubs. Then the next day, they ask for gas money for work, man. Because part of that... We'll go to my other scripture right quick. Part of that goes back to being impulsive, man. This is uh, Sirach 18 and 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites, man. The One of the tactics and strategies Esau used to make you a consumer and a debt slave is to make you impulsive and spontaneous, man. Because when you're, you're impulsive and you're spontaneous, Little by little, you chip away from your money. Little by little, you spend your money to where if you look back at how much you spent within the last month, if you actually tracked how much you spent in the last month based on impulsive spending, you're going to realize you spent a lot, man. Just by tracking how much you spent within the last 30 days, man. 
So that if you actually look at that, you'll realize why you might your money might be low. It might not just be, oh, you, you know, you're oppressed. It might be bad habits that you have that you might not realize that you have, man. All right? Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites. And, a, and a, another word to use for that is basically being impulsive or spontaneous, man. All right? Like I said, um, going back, going back to the last scripture I, I had, you know, in the time of, uh, basically riches or in the time of having money, think upon poverty. And the way you do that is I always put a little money back. Like I said, if you down to your last five dollars, save a dollar, save two dollars, man. All right, I always have a system to where, if possible. Put money back, man. And don't be impulsive and spontaneous, man. You see? Actually plan the things that you're going to buy. Because as it says in the scriptures, let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action, man. Are you going to be perfect with this every time? Probably not. But it'll behoove you to have guidelines to orient yourself by in Babylon. Because you have the spiritual matrix in America, meaning you have to constantly be in the word to not fall for these D money vibrations to rock you back to sleep. But you also have the, the physical monetary uh, matrix, man. The thing that's set up to keep you a slave, man. All right. And part of those, one of the things is basically being spontaneous, impulsive. That's why you walk, when you walk in the mall, all you, you see signs and people wearing T-shirts to say, just do it. Or oh, you see signs to say, obey your thirst. Because although they just bought the shirt because it's nice, it's to everybody else by these companies to have it like that. So you constantly triggering it to your subconscious to be impulsive, which will make you a spender, which will make you a consumer, which will keep you broke, man. All right. Going back to Sirach 9. All right. Meet not with the harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. All right. I'm going to skip down to verse 6. Give not thy soul into harlots, lest thou lose thine inheritance. You know, a lot of brothers, they have trouble with actual harlots, man. They'll, they'll go on these little sites and they'll get harlots and they'll be broke before payday, man. Now they ask for money or they don't have any money to contribute to anything, man. Because it basically goes back to being impulsive and going, going after your lust and not refraining yourself from your appetites, man. The scripture says, uh, is in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the ninth chapter, to be temperate in all things, man. Okay, you got your rocks off, but you got to get your rocks off every other day. If you're spending $80 to $100 plus every day, nah, man. Go, give not thy soul unto harlots, lest thou, look, uh, lest thou lose thine inheritance, man. All right? So that that's important, man, because it's one thing to be a, a brother that reads and he studies and he's spiritual, but what about the financial aspect of this truth? Because the, the scriptures cover every facet and aspect of your life, man. This are actually, these scriptures and guidelines will save your life. And it's not just talking about getting harlots. It's about going on these damn dinner dates, man. You might not be a jake to get actual harlots, but you might be getting a 21st century harlot, man. A so-called black woman or an American woman, man. How much money, you know what I'm saying, you spending... Dealing with these different women, man. Calling yourself being a player or whatever you want to call it, man. One thing I know about this this truth is very important. Time is energy is very important. Time and energy. So the time and energy you spending with these different women, that's time and energy that could be put into this truth, man. Put into doing videos, man. But along along with time and energy is money. All right. The scriptures tell you how to manage yourself as a man. All right. So. You know, you're spending all this money with the female because the scripture says, you know, in uh, Corinthians, that they the hell wise, they seek it to please the things of the world, how they may please their wife. So when you get a woman, you're going to try to, you know, please that woman because the glory of a man is a woman. So don't act like you're not following for some of these things that's being explained right here because we're men. But guess what? You have to be wise and, 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 and judicious with, with circumstances like this, man. All right? Because... Things like that to keep you broke, man. You see? Always going out, even if you're with the brothers, man. Or even if you by yourself. Always going out. That'll keep you broke, man. And it makes your spirit weak. Anytime you spend excess amount of time outside your pad, outside the world, you're always in the world. That makes your spirit weak and it makes your pockets low, man. Basically, basically this scripture is for the young man and admonition for the Israelite man and this truth to be more responsible, man. 
including myself. But, you know, I hope your brothers are edified. Let me see if I have any more scriptures. I think I covered everything. But, yeah, I hope your brothers are edified. You know, basically, Jake has to focus on putting money back, man. Being more judicious, judicious with spending, man. All right? Because some of the suffering you're causing yourself, man. All right? So Jake has to focus on, you know, being more judicious, you know, being a, being a, a man that's more prudent, you know, less impulsive. All right? As it says in, um, I believe it's the Corinthians. Let me see if I can get it right quick. Let me see if I can get it. Let the scripture speak. You know, we, we transition in this truth from boys to men. Like that music group, you had boys to men. Well, that's literal, man. We, we, literal, we literally transition from boys to men. And it's truth, man. You know? Just give me one second. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And part of those childish things is just being that impulsive Jake, impulsive with his spending, impulsive with his actions. You know, a, a man has enough self-control to be um cerebral, man. He has enough self-control to actually plan his actions. A child is impulsive. You give a child five, ten, fifteen dollars, he's gonna spend it in 30 minutes at the candy store or the arcade. All right. But a man, he's gonna compartmentalize his money and know where his money is going to go, man. All right. That's why I brought the picture up. The visual, you know, or I guess I I you replaced that with this, but that's why I brought the visual up with the Jake saving his money, man. That's part of being a man. All right. So in this truth, we cover every aspect of this truth, man, including managing yourself, man, managing your time, managing your money. But with that, I hope you brothers are edified to the next lesson. Shalom.